Hey, so as promised, here is an update to uh, my hybrid theory of a couple weeks ago. And uh, that update is that it's full of holes. It's kind of flawed. So uh, here's why. Um, the first flaw was pointed out by Tank Boy, which is that if you take this hybrid right here, which is uh, extension versus static spin, it doesn't obey the convention that I set up previously, namely that uh, all hybrids are multiple combinations of timing and direction. This is only a single combination of timing and direction. The poi appear to be going same time, same direction. And we can't really make any claims about the hands because one of them isn't actually moving. Ick. There's also the issue of, I was trying to frame this in terms of, you know, same direction, split time, same direction, um, same time, opposite direction, same time, and opposite direction, split time. But if, say, you take a triketra versus extension hybrid and you stop it right down here, you're actually moving your uh, poi in uh, kind of a triplicate time. And in fact, if you decide to branch out of this into making uh, anti-spin flowers, you find that those anti-spin flowers are lined up along an axis that is pointed off diagonally. So, which this begs the question of what if you're working with anti-spin flowers, say five, six, seven petals, conceivably up to an infinite number, right? Which means there are also an infinite number of uh, combinations of timing and direction, rather than just the four we're used to dealing with. Which begs the question to me, um, is this a concept we really need if it has really no limits to it? So, in pondering this, um, I started playing around with the transitions in uh, Charlie's uh, Nine Square Theory videos. And uh, what really struck me was the way that you could use Nine Square to transition between the different combinations of timing and direction. Like so, right? But as I mapped it out, what I realized is that these don't actually, these only map out all four combinations of timing and direction with the hands, not with the poi, right? Which led me to the conclusion that four combinations of timing and direction aren't really four combinations of timing and direction. That there are potentially an infinite number of phases or angles that we can uh, have the poi opposed to each other. But being as how there's only uh, two real modes, per se, which we can uh, use as the basis of these kind of transitions, that is, either the poi are going opposite directions in relation to each other, or they're going the same direction in relation to each other, like so. It suggests to me that what we're really talking about is not really modes of point movement, but different types of symmetry. Let me show you what I mean. Um, there was a TED Talks a couple of weeks ago dealing with symmetry, and um, it talked about two basic types of symmetry that we're used to dealing with. One is a kind of symmetry having to do with rotation that I'm going to refer to as radial symmetry, namely, if we start with this square, I can turn it 90 degrees, or another 90 degrees, or another 90 degrees. In any of those rotations, it still comes out looking like the original shape. Likewise, if I fold it over itself, it appears as though I've got equal amounts of the shape on both sides. It's true if I fold it both across or diagonals, right? Um, this is what I'm going to refer to as axial symmetry. That is, if you fold it across, it looks like the same shape. Radial symmetry is if you rotate it, it looks like the same shape, right? So, you can apply the same idea to poi. In fact, um, Surreal did that last year in, uh, in a document about poi spinning and geometry where he noted that um, when you're spinning opposites, if they're converging at the top and bottom of their arc, then they're symmetrical along a vertical line. And no matter what shapes I trace out along that methodology, it will always look as though they are reflected along that axis. Right? Same is true of if I do a split time. They look like they're 
symmetrical along a horizontal axis. If, on the other hand, I'm moving the ploy in the same direction, they'll either appear to be doubling uh, the pattern that they're creating, or they'll appear to be moving symmetrically around it, like so, in which case the point of symmetry is a constantly shifting middle. Here's the thing though, I think these are actually just different ways of describing that same pro uh, difference in property of radial symmetry versus axial symmetry. For example, if I were able to move my arms or poi in 45 degree increments, just like in switching between split time same direction and same time same direction, I'll find that I'm really tracing out the same shape with both hands, right? Now you can easily argue that in cases like, say, a uh, four petal anti spin flower or an extension around, that these are shapes that possess both radial and axial symmetry, right? And you would be right, except for the fact that when we perceive the two hands with the two poi heads moving together, we perceive them uh, as superimposing two different shapes at the same time. I'll borrow the term that I borrowed from Alien John weeks ago for this, which is the word composites, right? That when we put these two shapes together, we now perceive uh, these two shapes superimposed in axial symmetry along an axis that goes straight down the middle of our bodies. And likewise, if we separate our, arm, uh, our movements out in uh, split time, same direction, what we're really perceiving is that type of radial symmetry where all movements are phased 180 degrees off of each other, right? So, if, as I suspect, these are the only two types of symmetry we really deal with in poi, could we not then frame hybrids as being uh, examples of these kind of uh, composite shapes, wherein the shapes we produce are neither axially nor radially symmetric. That is, I'm performing anti-spin versus extension right now, and I have some absolutely awful visual aids to reinforce this. There is absolutely no way I can fold up a trichetra or rotate it around that will make it this same shape, right? Likewise, if I am doing extension versus static spin, there's absolutely no way I can rotate either circle or fold them up to make them the same sized circle, right? The circles I'm producing, in fact the composite shape I'm producing by superimposing these circles together, is one that while it's very similar, isn't congruent. The total um, the, the, the length of the radius for these two circles is different. Right? So, um, that's my new contention. Namely, that hybrids can actually be defined as composite shapes that exhibit neither radial nor axial symmetry. And what I like about this is that it scales. So, for instance, if I'm doing a unit circle hybrid, it exists, it, it uh, exhibits this same quality by virtue of the fact that I can never rotate a cat eye around to the point where it is the same shape as a uh, isolation, nor reflect it in any way to uh, create an isolation. Likewise, when it comes to the static spin hybrids, there's no way I can fold or rotate either a static spin or a trichetra to make them the same shape. And when it comes to the full on polyrhythms, of course, likewise, there's absolutely no way I can rotate or reflect a trichetra to make it the same thing as an extension. So, um, let's put this one to the test. Uh, for all I know, it is as flawed as the last theory. But I like this one because it has several implications for things like caps and, uh, and weaves and the like 
that uh, I'll be exploring in future videos that could conceivably make this a winner. So, with that, I will bid you guys adieu. Peace.